Our speaker this morning is Kate Green MP, the Shadow Education Secretary. Following Kate's address, we will be joined by Nick Linford, editor of FE Week, for Q&A. Please welcome Kate. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak to you today to discuss what I regard as one of the most important issues facing our education system. In the last year, we've seen the apprenticeships and skills system experience unprecedented disruption as a result of the pandemic. And now it must be an essential part of how we rebuild our country. Colleges and providers have faced huge financial and logistical challenges over the past year. Learners have had to cope with hybrid learning and completing their assessments. And as businesses have felt the effects of the economic shock, many young people have been unable to get that first vital foot on the ladder of earning and learning. I want to pay tribute to all of you for the countless hours you've put in to keep our education system and skills system moving in the past year, allowing so many people to continue to access vital learning opportunities. You've done an extraordinary thing in difficult circumstances. And I also want to thank FE Week for keeping us informed and updated on the FE and skills world and acting as its vocal champions. Today, I want to assure you that Labour shares your wholehearted commitment to a world-class vocational education system and apprenticeships, where opportunities to earn, learn and develop new skills are available to all, whatever their background, and I look forward to working with you to achieve that. But even before the pandemic, which has caused so much disruption, successive Conservative governments had failed to build a skills system fit for the 21st century. And now, after 10 years of consecutive Conservative government, it's become clear that far from building the system, it's been pushed to crisis point. Since 2010, further education and skills have borne the brunt of the government's harmful economic choices. We've seen further education funding cut, access to learning restricted, and maintenance support for younger learners abolished. Billions of pounds have been cut in real terms and the consequences have been sadly predictable. There are fewer young people studying in further education, fewer workers able to retrain and upskill. These cuts were a false economy, cuts that deny someone the chance to gain new skills and qualifications, the very things they will need to advance and work or seek opportunities in a new sector essential to help rebuild and grow our economy. In short, a decade of Conservative incompetence has created barriers to opportunity and made our economy insecure and unequal. Those failings are all too evident in the apprenticeship system. In the years since the apprenticeship levy was introduced, the number of new apprenticeships, apprentices has plummeted with the number of new starts down by over a third compared to five years ago. Too often, apprentices do not receive the gold standard training they should expect and deserve. Too often, they don't get support to progress through their training. Too many do not even get paid their legal minimum wage. And that is quite simply shocking. And the decline in opportunities has not been felt equally. It's replicated the deep inequalities that were already pervasive, both in our education system and in the labour market. For learners from the most disadvantaged backgrounds, the number of new starts has fallen by half in just five years, compared to a fall of 17% among the least disadvantaged. For women, the number of new starts has fallen by 40%, compared to 30% for men. Younger learners, and those studying at lower levels have seen starts fall far faster than older, more experienced, more highly qualified adults. And it was astonishing to hear the minister claim to be shocked earlier this week when FE Week published data showing a criminally high apprenticeship dropout rate on the new standards. It's a stark reminder that even as the apprenticeship system is not delivering for thousands of people every year, 
the government have been content with business as usual, whatever the cost for those who need the opportunities. The government introduced the apprenticeship levy, but failed to define what success for the system looks like beyond setting arbitrary targets for the number of new apprentice trips. And then it consistently missed those targets. Despite the best efforts of many training providers and employers, apprenticeships are becoming a closed shop, with those who could benefit most, particularly young people, locked out in favour of those who are already established, better qualified, better paid professionals. Instead of a route into opportunities and employment for young people, they've become a way for the already more advantaged to consolidate their position in the labour market. Our apprenticeship system should serve to transform the life chances of everyone, particularly young people, not simply entrench existing inequalities in our society and economy. But all too often, the government's policies have made it impossible for the system to achieve that. From a failure to support young apprentices to creating financial barriers to accessing lifelong learning, the system has closed thousands out of opportunities. Repeated failures by successive conservative governments have ignored the millions of people who could benefit from a great apprenticeship. And with each individual who's locked out of the opportunities they offer, our economy suffers. The result remains an unequal and insecure economy characterised by weaker growth and lower productivity, while huge numbers are trapped in low-skill, low-wage jobs. Labour believes in a skills system that genuinely transforms life chances, that creates new opportunities for those who need them, and that has the potential to make our society fairer and our economy from households to businesses more secure and prosperous. And as we begin to recover from this pandemic, millions of people will find themselves facing enormous insecurity as we emerge from a year of unprecedented disruption, exacerbated by the decade of economic mismanagement that came before it. To rise to the challenge that will face millions of working people across the country, we must therefore transform education, our society and our economy. Young workers are by far the most likely to have lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic. Over 600,000 people under the age of 35 lost their jobs in the last year. But many of them will not be able to access new education or training. There's still no credible plan to get them back in the workplace. Meanwhile, millions of people are in low paid and insecure work, often in sectors that have faced the greatest disruption in the last year, but they too are locked out of the government's skills offer. And new and emerging businesses, SMEs and sectors that are vital for the green economy that will drive our country to net zero, are looking to expand, but can't get the skilled staff they need, nor provide the apprenticeships that could enable them to provide in-house training while growing their business. As both my colleagues Annalisa Dodds and Ed Miliband have said, it's only by ensuring that everyone can access the skills they need that we can create the hundreds of thousands of green jobs we need, not just to secure our economic recovery from the pandemic, but to secure the future of our planet. That's why Labour have a plan to create 400,000 green jobs as part of a fair and green recovery. Why we've announced a jobs promise to protect a generation of young people from the risk of long-term unemployment, and why we've called for the government to do far more to create new apprenticeships. Labour's absolutely clear that putting skills and training foremost is essential to our recovery from the pandemic and that we must work with and back business if we're to secure our economy and rebuild our country. And it's not surprising that recent polling by the Social Market Foundation of Further Education Trust for Leadership shows that more people would prefer their child to get a vocational qualification after leaving school instead of attending university. When apprenticeships operate as intended, they represent a route into new knowledge, transferable skills and opportunities that are valued by employers as a marker of excellence and are seen by parents and learners as a genuine equal alternative to the academic route that so dominates our political debate and culture. They can be a route to good jobs and great prospects. But we can't continue with a system that denies opportunities to those who need them most that sees thousands of apprentices paid unlawfully low wages 
and that fails to support businesses across the country. So this is a time to be bold, to go with the grain of what our country needs and what people want, an excellent skills and apprenticeship system. We must start with reform of the apprenticeship levy. Business investment and training must be an essential part of our education system, but the levy has coincided with stars plummeting, SMEs unable to take on new staff, and young people and the most disadvantaged losing out most. A fundamental review of the levy is now imperative to bring about the investment and training essential to individuals, employers and our economy. A reformed apprenticeship levy must ensure that most, mo those most in need of training can access it and that there's genuine support for learners to progress so they're able to get to the starting gate for high quality apprenticeships, including via traineeships. It must ensure that all businesses and regions of the country can benefit. The investment we make in trading must secure our economy, ending the insecurity and inequality that have scarred the last decade of people's working lives and building the high skilled, high waged green economy we need for the future. And like all investment in the public's interest and in our country's future, it is essential that it's spent wisely and well, delivering genuine value for public money. So we must do more, not just to create apprenticeships, but to create them for those who would benefit the most and create the jobs our economy and country will need for the future. And for this system to work in every part of the country, it must empower local and regional leaders, giving them a genuine voice to shape the system so that it delivers for their local economy and community. Rather than settling for a system handed down from Whitehall that doesn't work for local communities, Regional and local leaders must be empowered to build a skills system that creates quality jobs and ensures qualified people available to fill them in every town and country, city across the country. Our Metro mayors and combined authorities must have a major role in supporting apprentices and apprenticeships so that the training system works hand in hand with regional and local regeneration and industrial strategies to revitalize regional and local economies. The coming months and years will be a defining time for our skills system. As we emerge from the pandemic, hundreds of thousands of young people face unemployment and long-term insecurity. They need to be able to gain new skills, knowledge and opportunities if we're to protect their future and secure our economy. That means transforming our skills and apprenticeship system, building on the work already being done by providers and employers to create hundreds of thousands of new opportunities in every part of the country. It means delivering an education system that works not just for the 50% who study A-levels and go to university, but for the 100% for everyone, whatever their age and background. Nobody and nowhere should be left out or left behind as we rebuild our country. We can't afford to waste anyone's potential. Training and skills are essential to transform lives, communities, our economy, and our future prospects. That will be a priority for the next Labour government.